Today, we're gonna to be going over the five reasons why you won't be buying AMD's brand new Ryzen 7 5800X3D. AMD is planning on launching a whole host of new CPUs in just about a week on April 20th, and the flagship of that is the 5800X3D, their brand new debut of their 3D vCache architecture, which AMD has designed in their chips to create a much better gaming setup. 3D vCache allows AMD to stack their cache vertically as opposed to horizontally, which means that they can put a whole a lot more on their chips and make it faster at certain tasks. They're gonna be putting this in their highest end Epic chips and they're gonna be debuting it for regular consumers in the 5800X3D, which will have 96 megabytes of L3 cache. Compare that to the 5800X, which only has 36 megabytes of total cache. And while we're only a week away from the retail launch of this chip, full reviews have started to come out. So we have a much better picture of what the 5800X3D brings to the table. A lot of consumers Consumers were hoping that AMD would be showing off a higher end chip like a 5900X 3D, but they are only releasing the eight core 16 thread version, which has led a lot of people to be disappointed because they wanted something that was gonna be more flagship level. And that brings us to the first reason why you won't be picking up the 5800X 3D and that it is so close to the launch of Zen 4, which is going to be the Ryzen 7000 series of chips. And AMD is likely to be bringing 3D vCache to those chips. The 5800X3D appears to be a test run for something that we're expecting to have significantly more performance when the Ryzen 7000 chips come out later this year. And while it's nice that the 5800X3D is being launched in the current generation so that it can be used with AM4 motherboards, the current motherboards that are out there, it also kind of comes at the end of when people might be saving towards huge upgrades when AM5 drops and they'd have to upgrade to DDR5 and a whole new setup. Considering that the 5800X 3D only allows for modest gains over the 5800X and comparatively to Intel's chips, it really doesn't give enough extra oomph to last you much longer than what you currently could have with a 5900X or a 5800X. It doesn't prolong the upgrade cycle long enough over current offerings from AMD for it to make sense to buy right now as opposed to waiting for Zen 4 come this fall. Then reason number two is that the 5800X 3D, while a decent step up in gaming from the 5800X, it's actually slower in regular performance. This was found by multiple reviewers that when it comes to regular everyday productivity or day-to-day -day tasks, the 5800X3D, thanks to the fact that it doesn't have overclocking, precision boost overdrive, and then coupled with the fact that it has lower clock speeds, actually behaves worse than the 5800X. In gaming, it's a champ, but in regular tasks, it proves to be a side grade at best or a downgrade at worst from some of the chips that are out there. Comparatively to the 5950X and 5900X, it is actually still worse, even if it might be a better gaming chip. And part of that, the lack of overclocking ties in with reason number three. There is no current way to get extra oomph out of this chip. While it does allow you to have all of that extra gaming performance, there is no overclocking, so you cannot break through the limitations that are currently on the 5800X 3D. You cannot get it faster than it otherwise could go. Whereas with other AMD chips, you might be able to squeeze out 100 or 200 extra megahertz. AMD has locked that down because they cannot support overclocking and the 3D vCache because it's more sensitive to higher voltage. And some people have said that the lack of customization and overclocking kind of goes against the ethos that AMD presented when they launched Ryzen, which would allow you to overclock on nearly every motherboard and nearly every chip that launched. It's getting more locked down, similar to how Intel has it, rather than being an open and free platform like people have come to to enjoy. It doesn't appear to be a change of heart by AMD because a lot of the chips that they're launching, like the Ryzen 5 5500, even though this is a cheaper version, is still overclockable. It just appears to be a specific limitation on the Ryzen 7 chip. And then reason number four is that it's not that much faster than Intel. In all of the benchmarks that are out there, the 12900K and 12900KS are roughly toe to toe with the 5800X 3D. You can find specific games and specific scenarios where the 5800X 3D shines over Intel, but on average, you're just as well off with Intel's offerings. So if you're looking for the latest and greatest, you're gonna be buying late into the generation cycle for something that isn't going to actually top the competition very easily, and then lacks the new feature sets that Intel's Alder Lake supports, such as PCI Express 5.0 and DDR5. And while those currently aren't enough incentive for you to upgrade, if you buy into that platform now, DDR5 is gonna likely last you longer than your current DDR4. 
setup, given that AMD is going to be launching Zen 4 later this year. But then reason five, which I think is the most important one overall, is that the price to performance is just not very good. Selling the 5800X3D for $450, given the fact that it is not that much faster than the competition, given that it is slower in regular performance, given that there is no overclocking, you are spending quite a bit to get what is just going to be a temporary bridge until AMD's next generation. Getting a 5800X right now is $110 cheaper on Amazon, coming in at only $340. But then for $100 more, you can actually get a Ryzen 9 5950X. You can double the cores, make it much better in productivity task, and actually pretty dang close in gaming performance. And in fact, the Ryzen 9 5900X is only $394 right now, cheaper than the 5800X3D. The AMD 3D vCache chip makes a ton of sense if you said, hey, what is the fastest gaming chip that I can buy on a reasonable budget? That's going to be the chip that you want. But I think if you're asking the question, what's the best long-term option, it would be waiting for Zen 4 or potentially getting a stopgap chip right now, like a 12400F, a Ryzen 5 5600. There are several options that AMD has in their own lineup that make a lot more sense to tide you over until 3D vCache becomes mainstream on the Ryzen 7000 series chips. If you want the best overall desktop gaming chip out on the market right now, I think the 5950X makes a more compelling argument than the 5800X3D. The 12900K is a harder pill to swallow at $600, but given the fact that it performs much better in multi-threaded and general workload tasks, it actually might be a better buy considering the fact that you'd be buying into a whole new platform on Alder Lake. Now, none of this is to say you shouldn't pick up the 5800X3D. I think these are just the five key reasons why most people actually won't be considering this chip, even if it is a huge step forward for AMD. I'm really excited for it, but I think money is better spent waiting for it to be debuted in most chips in the Ryzen 7000 series instead of picking it up as the 5800X3D. Do you agree with me? Do you not agree with me? Let me know in those comments down below.